In this video, we are going to see about the male causes of infertility. We had discussed female infertility. Now, we are going to discuss about male infertility. So, the causes of male infertility can be classified into pre-testicular causes, testicular causes, post-testicular causes and sperm related factors. So, pre so, based on the location of where the problem is, we have classified the different causes of infertility. So, it can be classified into pre-testicular, testicular, post-testicular post and semen related factors. So, now we will see each one by one. So, first we will see the pre-testicular causes. So, what is meant by this pre-testicular causes? In pre-testicular causes, see we know that the hypothalamus produces a gonadotrophin releasing hormone which in turn act on the pituitary to produce a very two important hormones required for spermatogenesis that is FSH and LH. So, LH or luteinizing hormone acts on the Leydig cells to produce testosterone whereas FSH or the follicular stimulating hormone will act on the sperms and cause spermatogenesis. So, if there is any problem either with the hypothalamus or with the pituitary, what happens? There will be decreased level of LH and FSH and this in turn will hamper our spermatogenesis. So, all the conditions that causes that are that causes male infertility or a decreased spermatogenesis due to a decrease in these two hormones that is FSH and LH or GnRH it is, it is uh, grouped under pre-testicular causes. So, some of the common examples of diseases that cause pre-testicular infertility are diabetes, hypothyroidism as well as hyperthyroidism, hypogonadotropic hypogonadism as well as hyperprolactinemia. So, these are different causes which affect either GnRH or LH and FSH production. Okay. Next is testicular causes. So, testicular causes can either be due to congenital anomalies or abnormalities especially in case of Klinefelter syndrome or Noonan syndrome. See, you can see that in Noonan syndrome, again, both of them are congenital anomalies and there are specific features for each. For, for example, in Noonan syndrome, we've got a triangular face, splayed eyes, wide neck, cryptorchidism as well as penile defects. Whereas in Klinefelter syndrome, which is in which the genotype is XXY, here we've got sparse facial hair, reduced muscle tone, prominent bis as well as small testis. So, these are the two important congenital condi anomalies in which the testis itself is affected. Another conditions are uh, conditions like varicocele, cryptorchidism, orchitis and hydrocele. In these conditions also, the testis will be affected. So, proper sperm production will not take place. So, this is an example of cryptorchidism in which there is a failure of testis to descend into the scrotal sac and this is an example of hydrocele in which there is accumulation of fluid inside the sac okay moving on to post testicular factors in post testicular factors the the thing is here the sperm production is normal but the route of the sperm travel is obstructed especially in case of seminal it's called seminal duct obstruction see this flow of semen into the penis is obstructed Okay, so this can be due to infections, trauma, anti sperm antibodies, which is destroying the sperms, hypospadias, cystic fibrosis, as well as inability to ejaculate. So, all these in all this, there is proper sperm production, but the ability to for the sperm to travel is hindered. Okay, so these are the post testicular causes infection. Trauma, anti sperm antibodies, hypospadias, cystic fibrosis, as well as inability to ejaculate. Next, we'll move on to the semen related factors. Okay, so here spermatogenesis is there, but it is not thus the quality of the semen is not up to the mark to produce fertilization. So, we'll see what they are. First condition is called oligospermia or oligozoospermia, which means low sperm count. Okay. So, that means the amount of sperm that is present is less. Next is asthenozoospermia, which means there is poor sp uh, sperm motility. The sperms are not agile enough to move forward. Okay. Then tetrospermia or sorry, teratospermia or teratozoospermia, which means large amount of sperm with an abnormal morphology. Sperms are there, but the morphology is different. Okay. That is called teratozoospermia or teratospermia. Next, we've got 
necrospermia or necrozoospermia which means there's a large amount of dead sperm in the ejaculate and we've got azoospermia which means zero sperm count there is no sperms inside the semen so these are the different semen related diseases that can affect uh, the fertilizing fertilizing capacity or which can lead to infertility so next we'll see how to manage male for infertility we've seen the different causes now we'll see how to manage them so the three important tests or steps in case of management of male infertility are physical examination semen analysis as well as hormonal analysis so in physical examination we have to look for any uh, we have to look for any congenital causes like klinefelter syndrome or noonan uh, syndrome and then uh, you have to look for any post testicular causes which is hindering the release of sperm and you can also look check for any varicocele or cryptorchidism which is uh, causes decreased sperm production so a physical examination is done to make sure that the whether the male has any uh, problems next in order to know whether there are any semen related problems you have to test the semen look for the different uh, characteristics of semen which i'll be going on in detail in the next slide and then you have to look for the hormone analysis also to know if there are any pre testicular causes and you have to do other tests so semen analysis is a very important topic from an examination point of view so in semen analysis basically we have to look for many characteristics of semen so what are they so we have to look whether there's an adequate volume we'll have to look the liquefaction time the viscosity the ph and also the concentration motility and morphology so concentration means the amount of uh, sperm sperm per ml so it should be at least more than more than or equal to 15 million per ml you have to please remember this value it should be more than 15 million per ml that is a concentration next the motility should be at least more than 40 percentage mobile that should be forward motility motility of at least 40 percentage and the that should the morphology should be normal okay so now moving on to some i'll just explain these features once again so on macroscopic analysis the volume should be at least 1.5 ml per ejaculate okay 1.5 ml per ejaculate the liquefaction time is around 20 minutes that is the the consistency of the of the seminal fluid or the semen will change after some time and that is called liquefaction and the normal liquefaction time is around 20 minutes the viscosity should be normal and the color should be normal and the ph should be between 7.2 to 8 7.2 to 8 okay now on microscopic analysis the spermatozoa concentration should be more than 15 million per ml more than or equal to 50 million per ml the sperm count should be at least more than 39 million per ejaculate see the here the difference is this one was per ml spermatozoa concentration per ml and this is per ejaculate so it should be around 39 million per ejaculate okay and the motility of the sperm should be more than 40 percentage and the vitality should be more than 58 percentage the morphology should be normal and finally there should not you have to look for any presence of leukocytes or any other cells that might be hindering the sperm sperm development okay so these are the different characteristics of a normal semen and this is very important from an examination point of view so next moving on to hormonal analysis so here we can do a hormonal analysis to test whether there are any uh the levels of prolactin the levels of testosterone fsh and ls should know if there are any pre testicular causes and other tests for male infertility can be done like dna dna analysis karyotyping uh then semen sperm culture if there are more wbcs you can look go for a sperm culture and then you can do a if the semen sample does not contain spermatozoa you can do a testicular biopsy and recover the sperm and also you can do a normal uh, sperm fish that is it's a it's a immunological study that is done to know if there are any abnormalities so these are the other tests that can be done for male infertility okay so i think uh, that will complete this topic so from an exam point of view the most important question here is obviously semen analysis because you can get essay questions in which they'll give you an abnormal semen analysis and then you'll be asked to um, predict the cause of infertility and from there on there will be other questions re related to that so anyway i hope this concept is clear we've talked about the different causes of infertility 
pretesticular, testicular, and posttesticular, and semen related factors. We've seen the different investigations that are done. We've uh, seen about the semen analysis, physical examination, semen analysis, hormonal analysis, and other tests for male infertility. So, I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.